Welcome, I'm Bob Lund. And I'm Chris Rippard with Fastenal Engineering. We're here to talk about corrosion today. Uh, corrosion essentially in my mind means keeping things from rusting. I think that's a good definition. Okay, uh, we've got a lot of ways to do that. Uh, there are some materials uh, like a stainless steel that just doesn't rust, but most of what we deal with in the fastener world uh, is an electroplating or a coating of some kind. Uh, we might as well start off talking about a standard. In the ASTM world, F1941 is the standard that's uh, uh, it's out there for the inch world products, ISO 4042 for the metric world products, uh, and that takes us through the yellow part that I have here and the, the silvery part that I have here. What's the difference? The difference really is, is on the chromate conversion coating. Um, the yellow or gold color, we, we call it yellow zinc in our world, tends to contain hexavalent chromates and as we talk about what's going to be allowed for different compliance directives, that hexavalent chromate uh, might make it on the naughty list. So in addition to like lead and mercury and cadmium, hexavalent chromium is now on our, uh, in Europe it's an official naughty list, in the U.S. it's not quite as official, but uh, if anyone has seen the movie Aaron Brockovich, it was all about that hexavalent chromium. It's trending that way. Okay. We have a silver product here. Um, it's compliant. Mm -hmm. Trouble is, it's just not as good. So the stuff that is bad for you is also good for keeping corrosion away. So customers have to decide, um, how can I get something that is compliant, but yet lasts longer? What are my options? Well, we've got a few options. And the, the fun thing now is we have, uh, we have different options for sealers, which we can just apply right over the top of those. Um, we'll, we'll talk about FNL 240 and FNL 240L when we, when we get into torque tension later. But there's also a whole world of zinc flake coatings out there as well. So as opposed to uh, electrolytically putting zinc on the parts, in the coating world it's often a dip spin or perhaps a spray uh, where you take a paint-like carrier and put zinc and aluminum flakes in there, dip the parts in, spin off the excess, put it down a curing line, uh, put a second coat on, and all of a sudden you're dealing with corrosion resistance that's a, uh, resistance that's a whole lot better. Here we might only be getting 24 hours with the corrosion resistance. Here we might be getting 96 hours uh, in a salt spray test uh, where we might get 1,000 hours uh, from those coatings. But tell me about the salt spray test. What am I talking about when I'm talking about hours? Yeah, so that salt spray test is really the, uh, the most common way for us to measure uh, the, the performance of our corrosion protection. And ASTM B117 is an industry specification that allows us to have kind of an apples to apples comparison when we're, when we're looking at uh, kind of judging these on how good they work. So we've got a chamber, picture a bathtub with a cover on it maybe, uh, where you've got warm water, salt water at a certain level, of, a certain temperature, a certain humidity, and we've got a fog that we kind of blow over the top of the parts to speed up the corrosion. And it's an apples to apples test to see which coating, plating might last the longest. Uh, there are other versions of that test that might include cyclical, uh, uh, dry it off, heat it up, cool it down, uh, but predominantly we're going to be talking about the B117 test. Um, tell me a little bit about this zinc plating. Are there any options for other things I could put on for platings? Certainly, you can, uh, you can choose different colors for, for aesthetic reasons. Um, you, can, you can add lubricants for torque tension reasons, and, and oftentimes that's going to affect that, those numbers you see in your, in your salt spray chamber. Whenever you start putting more stuff on, it's going to cost more. Uh, for a sealer or a top coat, uh, I can even get really high corrosion resistance numbers if I go with like a zinc nickel mm -hmm. type plating, uh, but you're spending probably two or three times the amount of money, uh, you're also getting a thousand hours worth of salt spray rather than a hundred hours worth of salt spray. So uh, it's up to the customer to decide what it is that they're looking for. And there's also some issues in this plating world uh, with what you should and shouldn't put on uh, for an electroplating. Tell me where my worries should be. We start to get really concerned electroplating very high strength parts. So parts that are over HRC 39 and above. So in the inch series, 
It's usually the socket head cap screws. Um, the metric the metric side also carries that 12.9. Those are, are certainly of concern for electroplating. And parts that fail from hydrogen embrittlement may see the head just pop off, shoot off like a bullet. Uh, so there's some danger involved. Uh, in addition, our customers don't want their product to get shipped to their end users and have bolts that don't have heads on them. So uh, all stuff that we want to uh, service guides to our customers uh, to help them make good decisions. So Chris, as we mentioned earlier, there's an awful lot to talk about in this uh, uh, corrosion resistant world. We could spend an hour just on this. Uh, where can people go to get more information uh, to dive in a little deeper? The best starting point would be engineer at fastenall.com. That's going to get you in touch with dozens of different engineers. Uh, we also have information on our website fastenall.com uh, and we'd be happy to help you with any questions that you might have. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.